Loktar friends. Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, everyone's favorite orc warrior. Uh, minor change in today's training and a couple of PRs. I don't know, do we count it as, as three PRs if I hit the same weight without tearing any skin on my thumb on a hook grip? Like if I hit my previous skin tear PR without tearing skin, I think that counts as a PR. <laughs> Considering that's my limiting factor on my hook grip is my thumb skin. Uh, guys, I decided to go back to beltless for a bit. Uh, I've been looking at it and I realized that I can stay more upright. I have to focus more on beltless training. You guys know I'm a big fan of beltless training. So much so that everyone freaked out that I wore a belt for a few months again. I haven't put on a belt in years. And I start wearing a belt for a few months and everyone's like, oh my God, Jason's a hypocrite. It's like, guys, you can wear belts in most strength sports. I just prefer beltless training for base building. I just think it, it's better for overall base building. So here's what I did. I got up to where I was doing a 408 squat with a belt low bar every day. Uh, I've started to become fatiguing, switched to high bar, reduced the weight slightly. And then I realized, you know what? I need to go back and rebuild my beltless squat up. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. That's gonna allow me to work on my technique more, still get heavy singles, heavy RPE singles, but it's gonna force me to engage my core better and focus on bracing because I have to to stay upright. And sure enough, look what happens. I'm having less of that upper back rounding automatically just by forcing myself to brace harder with no belt to work with. I don't have a belt to press against. Uh, it's going better because look at the 405, nice and upright. Nice and upright. So I'm like, let me start with something moderately heavy and we're going to do just like we did with the low bar with a belt. I'm going to start with a manageable weight for singles and I'm going to work it up. Let's, let's try to add five pounds a week to my beltless singles and then we're gonna keep doing the back off beltless pause squats to get the volume. And you know what, here's the thing. I still felt like I got a good training rep out of this with only 435. It absolutely felt it in my quads, felt it in my quads. So I needed, instead of doing any sort of deloading, I'm like, let me change my training stimulus. Let's switch to a different, slightly different squat variation that I really love doing because I feel it carries over so well. Let's do that, right? That's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna start with 435 and we're gonna work our way up in the direction of 500. And uh, again, novel training response to go with the extra back off work. And again, no need to mess with deloads for the squatting. People are like, hey, your lower body's at its uh, maximum recoverable volume. Yes, it is, yes it is. But I don't wanna quit training and adapting so let's just change the squat style slightly. So we can do that and then this back off works. So I'm gonna to try to do two sets of back off uh, every week and I might even increase that to three some days depending on how I'm feeling, but I'm getting one hell of a burn doing just two back off every day. So I think that's where we're gonna go with the squats and that's great. That'll give me the, the training response I want. I'm reducing my axial loading a little bit to compensate for all the deadlifting I'm doing and we can just keep building work capacity on these squats. But the main thing is that it, it's keeping me a little more upright. It's cleaning my form up because it's forcing me to focus on that. And I've noticed that, that the more I focus on bracing the core and staying upright, the more my quads seem to be lit up by doing this. So I'm like, okay, this is, I think this is gonna work for a while, so let's do that. We built up the low bar with a belt, 485. Then when I went to high bar, 485 was stupid hard, like a true max. Then we started struggling with the extra volume and the deadlifting on the high bar. So I'm like, let's go beltless. Let's go beltless for a little while. And let's start ramping that beltless squat up. And I might do that all the way towards my goal. You know, we'll see how strong I can get on the beltless. Uh, my lifetime best was 585 without a belt. So we're gonna see where we can go now as an older man without blasting a bunch of tests <laughs> and uh, see what we can do here, right? Just be smarter about it. Pay attention to things you don't care about when you're young and dumb and blasting a bunch of gear. Gotta be a little more careful. Gotta pay attention to recovery. So that's what we're gonna do. Uh, I went ahead and bumped up my bench today because the bench is just coming along nice. Uh, a bunch of people noticed in my uh, my video the other day, like your triceps have gotten bigger. Uh, some people said that in my Keno Booty video yesterday. And yeah, it's all this heavy pressing, all this extra pressing volume. 
uh, will definitely grow your triceps. So it's probably not a surprise. They probably are growing. So uh, I went ahead and did 325 for my close grip peak set today. And honestly, wasn't that bad. Felt like I left pounds in the tank. So we are getting a response to this back off work. It is absolutely increasing my bench strength. And it should, because it should be hypertrophying my triceps, my pecs, my anterior delts. They should all be growing from it. And if they're growing, if you're causing muscle growth by using low reps with heavy weight for volume, uh, there's no way you're not getting stronger. Your maxes are gonna go up. Absolutely going to happen. So yeah, 325, easy pause. Nice, solid pause rep. Minimal arch, obviously using a little bit of leg drive because I'm sinking it deep. And again, people ask on that, you know, do you just touch on the chest and hold it or do you sink? It's like, I sink it. And every single guy that I know who benches over 500 or all ever sinks it. There's probably some exceptions. I'm just saying that's most of the guys I know. Uh, there's something to be said for sinking it. And I, and I find sinking it is the best way to let you use leg drive. If you sink the bar deep on your paws, the leg drive seems almost automatic if you're ratcheted up tight on your legs. It just seems to happen by default. You don't actually have to learn to do it at that point. It just happens. Uh, and it, it does for me. I don't know about everyone else. Maybe it's different for other people. But for me, if I sink the bar, leg drive happens automatically. Watch, it just happens. I could not do it if I wanted to unless I just let my legs come out loose and just, you know, set them up on the bench or kick them out straight. But if your legs are dug in tight, uh, it just seems to happen by default. But yeah, my back off work was easy today too. We bumped it up two and a half pounds this week, 285 for three by three for back off work. And pretty easy, pretty easy. And I'm sorry guys, my dog is gonna bark through this. I've had to pause this multiple times. I'm just gonna go through, he's not gonna quit barking. His other dog outside uh, just says what it is. Rush hour out there today. People are coming home from work. So everything's solid here, everything good on the back off work. Uh, it's progressing. And I have a feeling, because this was all easy this week, I know it's Monday, and yes, Sunday was my day off. And I've started treating it as a full day off because of my workload. I don't even do light work. I just do band work, uh, some mobility work, you know, a lot of massaging. It's usually what I do for Sunday at this point, and walking. I do a bit of walking, extra dog walking. But again, nothing taxing. It, it really is a day off at this point. So I really am only training six days a week. But yeah, this Monday was easy on this. It was easy. And I'm not having any doms or anything after. So yeah, I mean, we're, we're getting good progress on this. So my bench is just going to keep going up. And I'm happy with that. Uh, it'll probably go up again next week. You know, we'll bump it again two and a half pounds. We, we could probably, I think we're going to be able to get away with that several weeks in a row. Uh, hook grip, deadlift. You guys obviously know, this is what I'm doing at this point. Everyone's figured it out. Since I'm not in mixed grip, I am training all three types of everything else. Meaning I'm training my hook grip, I'm training my double overhand, and then I'm doing my heavier work with straps because my thumbs cannot handle anywhere near what I can pull, either mixed grip or with straps. Because uh, you guys have watched me pull 575 the other day and it wasn't, wasn't a grinder with straps. Uh, but my hook grip, I'm now up to where I can do 505. I tore my skin last week working up to 505 and had to tape it up. So this today, because my skin is still healing, I put one layer of tape around just a single joint in my thumb. So my entire thumb is not taped. For those who are curious, it's just the closest, uh, I guess, appendage to the actual hand. You'll see it when I walk up right there. And I don't have it wrapped two layers deep. I just have a single wrap around just to protect the skin, uh, just to make sure that heals. And then I need to get to where I do this without tape. So that's kind of going to be the goal each time. I, if it's been tearing a little bit, I'll use tape for a new weight. And then once I get used to it, I'll try to get that weight without tape and we'll just keep working it up. But you know, we're, we're 505 and 505 today, even with the one layer of tape, it didn't tear any skin. So I'm pretty happy with that. And then double overhand, I went ahead and got a PR today. I did 405, it went good. So I'm like, well, I did 415 the other day. Let me see if I can do 425 double overhand. And I did, but it started rolling a little bit at the top. So I had to go ahead and come down. I couldn't really hold it, unfortunately. But I did lock it, and when you guys see the rep when I pull it off the floor, you'll notice when I get to the top, it rolls a few inches. That, that's bar roll, and I have to go ahead and set it down so it doesn't roll out of my hands. But I got it. So I hope it's been informative, 
and I will talk to you guys next time. And here it goes. Wait for it.